Welcome to the morning ride. As always, I'm here with our host, Technically Tyler. Say hi to the camera. What up? I'm no nickname Mike. As we sit and record this, it's Father's Day. So for all you fathers out there, anybody lucky enough to be called dad, I want to wish you a belated happy Father's Day because you'll see this on Monday morning. Yep. As for me, I get to spend some time here with my oldest son. Yep. Um, we're bonding. Uh, this is great because we didn't have all this time early in life, but we're catching up. <laughs> we're so catching I think up, that's yeah. what matters. We're yeah. making up for it. Yeah. Yep. An extra 30 minutes a day. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> or a week, I guess. Something. <laughs> And, and all the text uh, messages. Yep. Yeah. And all the single mothers out there have all Father's the Day as well. Ladies. Yes, absolutely, because yeah. you ladies are doing it too. Yeah. Uh, you're playing mommy and daddy, so great job. Yeah, absolutely. So Surprised you didn't call them gals this week. Gals, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I started saying that, but that's just my thing, I, I guess. I don't know. I'm old school, I guess. Gals. Do, do you hang out with flappers? <laughs> yeah. It's the 1920s. Right. <laughs> the good old Dust Bowl days and yeah. <laughs> Prohibition. No big deal. <laughs> Right before the Great Depression. Right, exactly. So we are on episode number nine, dude. Terrific. Holy cow. They haven't canceled us yet? They have not canceled wow. us yet. And I think we're growing by like three fans every week. So excited. <laughs> hey, at this rate, we'll have 15 soon. There you go. I'm, I'm excited. No, just kidding. In all seriousness, thank you guys who continue to come back every single week and listen to our show. We're getting to the point where... I'd say at least once a week, somebody new is coming up to us and talking to us about the show or asking us a question, and I love that. I think that's so cool. Yeah, that is cool. And I'm going to take Tyler's line right now. Hit that like button. Yep, absolutely. Put some comments in there. We want to know what you think. And if you're enjoying the show, share it. All you got to do is click one button, and it'll show up on your news feed, and everybody else can see it. I would say two. It's like, then share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're right. Two buttons. My bad. I'm sorry, bud. That's what I'm here for. (laughs) So what is today's topic? I don't know, man. You came up with it. <laughs> did I? Yeah. Not yeah. a Google search this time? Well, I think you Google searched it. I did Google yeah. search it. So the topic we landed on for this week is going to be benefits of riding a motorcycle. I feel like this came up in a lot of our previous episodes about yeah. how there are some benefits and there are some drawbacks or risks, I guess you could say. So I thought we should break down what the specific benefits of riding a bike are because there's a lot of them. Yeah, let's fly in the face of convention and say motorcycles are badass. Exactly. Couldn't have said it better myself. That's not flying in the face of convention, (laughs) though, is it? I guess not. Get us going, bud. All right, man. So without further ado, number one, and this is something we talk about every single week. You You look cool. I would like somebody to do like a mashup video of us saying that. That you look cool on a motorcycle? I think we've said it at least five times. At least. So you look cool. That's number one, plain and simple. I don't think there's much explanation that needs to go into that. You just look cooler. I mean, if there is a need to look cool, rock it out. But, you know, you look cool. You look cool. All right, number two, uh, it's uh, peaceful and you find your zen. Um, I don't know if anybody is into, or if everybody's into Eastern religions. Maybe it's not your zen. Maybe it's just your center or your... Focal therapeutic point. is what I hear. Therapy. Yeah, a lot yeah, of people yeah. say it's therapy. Wind therapy is a big word. Exactly. I see uh I see riders post that on Facebook all the time, heading out for some wind therapy. Who wants to go out for some wind therapy? Mm-hmm. Got my wind therapy today. Yep. It yeah, is a real thing. It's a no better feeling. It's kind of like an escape. I think Nancy even said in her interview in the Meet the Team, she even said for her it's like a, it's an escape. It's so. like a shiatsu massage. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but sure. <laughs> I feel like I probably shouldn't leave that in the video. <laughs> Why not? No, it's, it's, there's no. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool. You're good. All right. Number three, commuting is easier and more fun. I think that also kind of goes without saying it's so much easier, especially if you're, I'm going to say if you're in a state where you're allowed to lane split, I will say I, I know whether it's legal or not, people do it anyway. So if if it's safe to lane split, it makes it so much easier to travel. Yeah, and that's and, pretty much California and Texas, I think, are the primary yeah. states. There may be some other um, smaller states. You can't get much bigger than California and Texas. Though. That's true. That's true. Um, but that lane splitting is only designed to alleviate traffic. So yep. it's not um, acting like a fool on the interstate. It's at right. stoplights so you can get off the line and And then there's also some states that are now starting to implement motorcycle lanes it almost looks like an hov lane Mm -hmm. 
And I guess you, you also can utilize the HOV link because part of the HOV is for that as well. That's so. another great point. So uh, if you are on a motorcycle, don't be deceived. You can use the HOV lanes in most states. Even so. without a passenger. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's so. true. Pretty cool stuff. And of course, Even though like it's a said, low occupancy vehicle. Yeah, yeah. An LOV. Yeah. <laughs> an LOV. <laughs> love. Everybody love, love everybody. <laughs> Oh, wow. too many movie quotes, I haven't even man. tried yet. <laughs> Number four, you got this one? Yeah, man, I'll take it over. Um, you learn perspective. It, it, it makes you more aware of your surroundings. And I'll say this from personal experience, and I think I said this on a previous podcast as well. Um, taking the rider course made me a better driver of a of a car, mm-hmm. or SUV, or minivan, minivan. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, definitely drive a minivan. It makes me look around more. Um, not that I was a horrible driver in the past, but it makes me pay more attention to my surroundings. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's odd to say, and, um, as a, as a motorcycle rider, you're looking for escape lanes, but even now in, in my, um, in my car, I, I'm looking for how I can get out of situations where I never looked for it before. I'm checking my blind spots more. I'm constantly looking in the mirrors. Right. Um, the awareness of the other people on the road is very important. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I think it goes without saying that there's a reason, again, that we've repeated that in multiple shows is because you can't hit that point enough that awareness is key when riding. And uh, and even when you're in a car, I mean, it goes both ways. So that's one thing we'll always talk about and we'll always preach. And I don't think you can ever say it enough times. Probably not. And you're pr- probably your insurance agent would, would agree. appreciate that. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. All right, man. Number five, it is better for the environment. I think that's something that a lot of people don't think about, but it's a benefit. There's no negative side of that. No, and I don't want to offend any hippies out there, but um, (laughs) cut your hair. Uh, (laughs) Just kidding. I love hippies, too. I'm kind of growing mine out. I don't know if you guys saw these locks coming out. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I mean, you use less gas overall. Yeah. so your carbon footprint is lower. Yep. Um, fuel efficiency is awesome. Uh, and then as we move into like electric bikes and stuff like that, we're getting live wire, getting and... rid of our fossil fuel dependency altogether. Yep. Um, you know, speaking of the environment, I was reading an article yesterday, um, and it kind of struck me as odd because apparently there is uh, a proliferation of crow deaths right over here on two sixty four. Really? Which, incidentally, is the highway that runs right beside the dealership. Here. Uh-huh. Um, so they found over 200 dead crows. And okay. the concern was that there was possibly some avian bird flu. Okay. And they were concerned about an outbreak and then that possibly crossing over to humans. So they did a study on it and they called in an ornithological expert. Um, do you know what an ornitholo- ornithological? I okay. I can't they, they st- it. If you could flash it up on the screen for the people, that'd be great. Okay. Um, ornithology is the study of birds. Okay. And so this this expert came in, and uh, he was trying to figure out why it was that all these crows were dying. Mm-hmm. And what they found was there were a lot of different colors of paint stuck in their beaks, and in their uh, claws, and the assumption was made that um, the ones with the paint on them were uh, actually hit by motorcycles. So they convened a study, and 98% of the dead crows were hit by motorcycles, while only 2% were hit by cars. Weird. So they continued on with the study to figure out what it was that was going on. Mm -hmm. Um, And they found out that when crows go to eat roadkill, there's always a lookout crow that warns the other crows that there's impending danger. Every crow can say, ka, ka, but no crows can say motorcycle. I mean, (laughs) I don't even know what to say to that. Ka, ka. Uh, From Boston. (laughs) Yeah, could be Boston crows. Or New York, could be. That was a good one. I thought that was going to break you. I'm trying to resist, Dead but that, that was actually, that was pretty funny. Sorry the story was so long. Yeah, that was a good one, though. All right. Number six. Okay, yeah. So <clears throat> another thing is, like, 
it's authenticity of the vehicle, right? The bike is yours, and you're going to make it your own. You're going to do upgrades to it. Um, you're going to learn how to wrench a little bit. You're probably going to do minor repairs like changing your oil, maybe switching out spark plugs. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't to keep you from coming to see a mechanic to get major work done. Although I know there's a lot of you out there that are rebuilding the, the engines, we doing cam work. Going yeah. On, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing what, uh, people will learn over time. I think one of the coolest parts about it too, though, is how easy it is to get in and start working on it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to know how to tear a bike apart or you don't have to know the insides and outsides of an engine in order to start replacing stuff on a lot of these bikes. There are a lot of aftermarket parts and there's a lot of stuff that Harley even makes that a lot of stuff is what I call plug and play. Or it's as simple as taking one bolt off, putting a new item on, and then bolting it back right where it went. Yeah. You know, switching mirrors, switching, uh, like, face plates and stuff like that. Switching bars. A lot of that stuff, I mean, I guess bars could be a little bit more in-depth because you have controls and whatnot. But Wiring and stuff, yeah. yeah. But for the most part, you can do a lot of things without having a huge, vast knowledge. And as you're doing it, you're going to run into stuff where you're going to learn. And the cool thing is you have YouTube. If you need yeah. to learn how to do anything, go on YouTube. You can find out how to do it. Yeah, and by no means uh, is this designed to tell you to not bring this stuff in to see a qualified and certified technician. Yeah. Um, these technicians are magicians. They're technician magicians. That's um, a good one. I like yeah, that. yeah. I, in a lot of ways, I think they're better than engineers. Uh, it reminds me when I was in college, uh, I was going for engineering. Mm -hmm. And uh, I showed up one day with uh, this sweet road king looking pretty choloed out wow. fish yeah <laughs> fishtails bars man this thing was the looking whole nice night. yeah and a classmate of mine said to me man when'd you get that bike i was like just yesterday man i said i was walking back from class going out to my car and uh, this fine lady walked she rode up on this bike she got off the bike and she took off all her clothes and she said take whatever you want so here i am i got the motorcycle he's like oh yeah that makes sense her clothes probably wouldn't have fit you <laughs> and so the next day i dropped out of engineering school and went for marketing but you got a motorcycle, got a, motorcycle out of it. <laughs> yeah. a road king too yeah wow that's impressive show load <laughs> show load <laughs> all right if you're still with us after those two lovely jokes. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Number seven. It can actually help you be healthier, both physically and mentally. It's a workout. I actually went home and was talking to my dad, who's been riding for 40-plus years at least. And I mentioned that point to him because I actually was reading a couple of studies that have been done. There's colleges that have done studies on this. That there are tons and tons of proof out there. That physically it makes you stronger, which I think that's kind of obvious, but there's a huge mental gain that you get out of it. So it's not just therapeutic, but kind of going back to what we said earlier, it changes your perspective. You're thinking much more. And one of the studies that they uh, showed was you are making so many more decisions so much mm -hmm. faster. So your brain is working so much quicker than it normally would. Where when you're in a car, unfortunately, nowadays, there's a ton of distractions. And so people just aren't as, you know, involved when they're driving versus when they're on a bike. Kind of dispels the myth of the dumb biker. But, mm -hmm. I mean, you Completely. know, the other is true um, that, you know, maybe bikers are a little bit safer than car riders because we, we don't have our phones in our hands sending text no. messages or making phone calls or you know, doing whatever it is that people in cars do with their phones. Right. Um, it is a full body workout. You'll get legs, you'll get back, you'll get core. Mm -hmm. Never skip leg day. Yeah. You don't want to be that guy that no. skips leg day. Because you want to be able to hold that thing up yeah. and just sitting in a stoplight. Yep. So I thought that was really cool. I, I, I thought it was very interesting that there were a lot of very big schools that were doing studies on it. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, and, and something else that fits perfectly into this and something that maybe we don't talk about enough um, is, especially on sport bikes, right, like Ducatis, um, you're going to be leaning and... Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean... That's how you turn on those yeah. things. They don't have much of a turn radius. Right. So, yeah, that's actually a really good point that I don't think gets brought up enough. Yeah. So, cool, man. All right. So, uh, another great thing is you get to meet... Um, 
you know, a wide array of people, people from all walks of life and trade stories. Everybody's got a story about their best ride. Um, you know, what got them into motorcycles, you know, why it is they chose the bike that they chose their favorite road trip with friends, stuff like that. And you're going to meet, you know, like I said, people from all walks of life, you're going to meet a welder, you're going to meet somebody that works on the docks, you're going to meet a lawyer, you're going to meet a doctor, military, military, tons of military here. (laughs) That's what we meet every single day. Police, you meet tons of stuff, firefighters. Riding a motorcycle is definitely a unifying thing. Yeah. You could, you could come from, like you said, all walks of life and it's cool because it's a common ground for everybody and a common interest that everyone can share. And then even on top of that, even from someone like my perspective, who does a lot of the video work for Bayside, there was a guy last year that came in and actually he has traveled to all seven continents and he's rode a Harley, specifically a Harley through every state in the United States multiple times and through every single country and every continent except Antarctica because of course obviously that'd be a little bit tougher but he's been to Antarctica and we interviewed him last year Um, I'll throw a link on the screen right now to that video it is on our YouTube channel super cool guy showed his story showed his uh, he had a bunch of photos that he had like on a big poster board showed us where he was playing with penguins and all this other stuff like the dude was legit and he had a picture in all four corners of the US on his Harley I want to play with a penguin yeah Yep. I, I, at first, when I was talking to him, I was like, so you're telling me you rode a Harley in Antarctica? And he's like, no, no, I just went there. <laughs> I was like, that's still cool. That doesn't make that any less cool. Yeah. I mean, there's not, there's not a whole lot of people yeah. who can say that. So even though it went from being a Harley thing and a bike thing to just talking to someone who's been to Antarctica, I never thought I would ever talk to somebody who's, who's experienced that. So really, really cool stuff. I mean, when, when Mike said you get to meet people from all over the world, you're not kidding. So, right. yeah. Uh, so number nine on the list, I think this one is one of the most talked about. It's just the freedom of, of riding a bike, man. Freedom. It, it, you can go places you can't go in a car or you shouldn't go in a car. <laughs> right. Um, there's just, there's so many different experiences that you will have that you wouldn't have in another type of vehicle. And, uh, you just, you feel the road, you, I mean, you, you're you one with the road, you've got, if you're riding with a group of people, I mean, the experience of riding in a group and being that in it and that focused on it, I think is just one of the coolest things and just letting go and enjoying. Yeah, and, and you, you come from a, a car culture, mm-hmm. and I, I'm sure you've done a lot of stuff like riding in groups with cars. Yep. It's way different. Yeah, I was going to say, just I'm a sure line. it doesn't match it's the It's a experience. line, yeah. yeah. And, and even the only way you can ever really go, you know, side by side, because you can't share a lane, obviously, not safely, right? Uh, is going side by side on like a freeway, and that's not safe, nor is it easy to do because people get in between you, where right. if somebody sees a whole line of riders... They're going to back They're off. not yeah. trying to cut you off. They're not trying to get in the middle. They're either going to try to go around you or they're going to stay behind you. Yeah. So it's a it's a whole different feeling that you don't get in the car world. Yeah. And then speaking of um, motorcycles being able to go places that cars can't, uh, this is especially true of like the Ducati Adventure bikes. Yep. And Harley's coming out with one uh, in the BMW's near future. got some. Yeah. Um, let's not pitch out brand names of I'm just messing with you. Bro. It's okay. <laughs> I was like, well, no, we, we do we, own a dealership yeah, yeah, with yeah. BMWs. So. No, no, we, we like all kinds of riders. So don't, don't, yeah. don't mistake that. Uh, and then lastly, I mean, it's fun. Plain and yeah. simple. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. I mean, that goes from, you know, riding a dirt bike, uh, mm-hmm. when you're a kid to, um, getting your first Harley, which is probably like an 883 or an iron 1200, unless, you know, you're just that. confident enough to just go ahead and move to a soft tail. And then, you know, as you start to get a little bit older, you decide that cruising's the thing for you. So you get on a touring bike and one day your little legs give out and you got to get on a trike. But I mean, it's still (laughs) all fun, man. I I tell you what, uh, one of the best signs I've ever seen in anybody's office is that you never see a motorcycle parked outside of a therapist's office. That is true. I mean, unless it's the therapist's motorcycle, probably, right? Yeah, very true. That's a good point. That's a very good point salient yeah so that is it for the main topic for today yep what we want to hit next 
events. Again, near and dear to my heart. Oh, yeah. So excited that we have them again. Oh, my gosh. So we've already talked about this a few times. June 25th through the 28th, we have the Roadshow Rodeo going on. We are going to have tons of vendors. We're going to have anything from lighting to airbrushing to uh, just some vendors where you can buy stuff. We've got artsy stuff, jewelry, anything you want, we're going to have it here. Um, I've heard throughout the couple of days, we're going to have a range of vendors. Um, some days we'll have more than others. Some in, some out. Yeah. Yep. But for the most part, we're going to have a pretty big lineup, but that leads me to another point. So I apologize. Negligence. to William for this, you know who you are, William, but we haven't talked about this and we need to on June 27th. So it's in the middle of the roadshow rodeo, which is why I overlooked it is a massive event that's going on on june 27th it's the boss show which is stands for busting out sound series what it's going to be is going to be a bike show it's going to be a sound contest for bikes so a little bit different than the car one that we did and there's going to be food vendors Uh, i just found out last night he actually messaged me to tell me we got an ice cream truck we were trying to get kona ice out here but we couldn't. It was such short notice, so we got an ice cream truck. Test ride Rick is going to love the ice cream truck. Yes, he is. Oh. He's, yeah, so that'll help you make some sales on some bikes because you don't have to worry about Rick being in right. Test ride Rick's favorite color is butter pecan. There you go. So absolutely want to see every one of you guys there. June 27th is going to be massive. We have tons and tons of people that are coming. We're already looking at a couple hundred people. All six of you that are still watching, be there. Yes, you better be there. We know you are. And you better bring at least one person with you. That makes 12. Because, yeah, that makes my job better and makes it easier and makes me look good. You might not get fired. I might not get fired. So if you could do us that solid, that would be awesome. And you get to come out and have fun as well. Yeah. So uh, Maybe I'll interview you. Yeah, maybe. We will be running around with a camera most of the day. (laughs) So that'll be fun. Hopefully it's not hot again. But it probably will be. <laughs> 72, 72. Yes. And then uh, last but not least, July 11th, uh, we have the Sons of Poseidon ride the sixth annual poker run that ends at Bayside. Again, like we said last episode, it's going to be a party. Yeah, this is usually a big deal. So yeah. um, uh, It does go to uh, benefit great charities. So, of course, you want to come out and be a part of that. And uh, as we get closer, so right after this next event, so probably next week, we're going to go a little bit more in depth on that and talk about what charities and exactly what to expect. Awesome stuff. Marketing guy. Cool, man. Deals of the month. 20% off uh, helmet trade-in still going on every Sunday. Bring in your DOT-approved helmet. Uh, used Worn to hell, whatever. <laughs> we'll take it. Trade it in. You get 20% off a brand new one. Yep. Protect your skull, sucker. Yep. And then we got 20% off all in-stock exhaust pipes. Uh, currently still going on through the 30th. I haven't heard any changes to the deal. I know I mentioned last week that there may be. Currently still going on through the 30th of June. So get on down here and get your bike loud. Make it loud. Get proud. All right. Last part of today's show. So cool. Last part of today's show. No, not that it's the last part, but this is so cool. This is cool, yes. So uh, there wasn't really too much going on in the Harley world right now. Uh, pretty much same thing. They're getting back into the groove, whatnot, and uh, making big decisions for the company. Trucks are showing up. We've yes. gotten in a lot oh, of Oh, yes, we have. I think yeah. we had... Tw- 19? 19? 19 on the last truck. I was going to say 12. Yeah, 19. Yeah. And, boy, that was a... That was a sight to see yeah. uh, if you go well you're already on our facebook channel if you're watching this it, go to our photos we have a photo of the whole lineup of them it looked sweet whoever took that photo did really good i don't know if it was you it was or rick or no, no, I dusty maybe i don't know i wasn't here that day but it was a sick picture it's like shows the whole line of bikes at a yeah. cool little angle so anyway check that out but last but not least we have ducati news uh this is sweet so I don't know who it is because I didn't spend the time to figure it out, but we're going to watch it anyway. Let's do it. Somebody created a life-size Lego Ducati Panigale V4R. That I don't care if you care about Ducati or not. Awesome. This is sick. The adult child in me is like, yes. Well, you just have to watch how giddy I get because this yeah. is the first time I'm seeing this video. So we're going to go ahead and roll this. We're going to put it on the screen now, and you're going to watch it while we re- we watch and react with you. Wow. Mike hasn't seen this yet. I only watched like 10 seconds because I didn't want to ruin it. 
All right, we're gonna go ahead and play it. So it's Lego Technic, so it's not just basic Legos, but these are... Yeah, so I used to have a lot of Lego Technic stuff, uh, especially a lot of Star Wars Lego Technic. You probably still like do, that. don't lie. Um, actually, uh, I gave them to a friend's son, and I hope he's taking good care of them. Um, but yeah, the Lego Technic stuff, it was droids. They had a lot of oh, yeah. parts and stuff. Cool so, stuff. Um, even some uh, battery operated. Wow. Yeah, this. Look at that thing. That's crazy. You know, if they, they it would be awesome if they put a. I guess they'd have to work with a bunch of motors to do it. But if they made that thing mobile. <laughs> All I know is the fact that they pulled a real Ducati in, pulled it apart, and then built everything based off it. I mean, I guess that's probably the way you'd have to do it. They just said 400 man hours to get this done. That's insane, though. That, it's surprising to me that that's all it took. Yeah. I don't know. Call me crazy, but that's insane detail. Hey, crazy. <laughs> that is, that is they even have the, uh, what's it called? Canards. Did you see how that flexed? No glue was used. 3D modeling software. There's lights. Whoever filmed this. this like heavily modded Legos. So, so. Holy crap. Dude, that's sick. I don't care if you like Ducati or not. That was cool. I wonder how much that kit would cost. <laughs> I don't even want to know. Probably more than the Ducati itself. <laughs> <laughs> just for just for the fact of saying that you have it. I mean, I've bought Lego kits that cost upwards of two hundred dollars. So I'm, yeah, it'd probably be up there. Yeah, but I mean, this was only like the Millennium Falcon, right? Like this big, so. <laughs> Gosh, nowadays I know there's like there's other sets out there that go for a lot. So yeah. I can only imagine a life sized version. That's crazy. That is nuts. Hey, awesome way to end, though. Yeah. I mean, we got to throw Ducati in quite a bunch, quite a bit today. Yeah, that's awesome. So hopefully, that bunch part. Yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, again, that's going to be episode nine of the Morning Ride podcast. Yeah, thank you all very much for staying tuned if you made it this far. Um, if you haven't, I'm, I'm you ain't hearing this anyway, so peace. I don't care about thanking you. <laughs> <laughs> Just playing. We love you all. So for Technically Tyler, I'm no nickname Mike. You've been on the morning ride. We're Thank out. Thank you very much.